Okay, so dynamic linking with autolysis linux code share. Come on. Yeah, that's good. A little bit of introduction. I think that not having the dynamic linking has been a big missing piece in, in the tool chain. People that are sort of going to start to use it, they, they, they would be. A, <coughs> reluctant to choose OpenRisk if they want they want to use some Linux applications for it because it could be a, a reason for them to choose it at least. So, so that's why I have sat down and tried to get it working. Uh, I mean, there's probably more advantages, but two that I thought of is <coughs> it's reduced code size. Several applications can share the same compiled library. And it simplifies porting on applications because many applications expect that you would do dynamic linking in the build scripts or whatever. They, they expect that. So so a lot easier to just run configure kind of and just make and, and you're done with it. You don't have to try to force it to build a static version of it. So a bit of a background overall of the of the Linux tool chain. I'm not gonna go go uh, further back than the 4.5.1 GCC version that Jeremy and Jan was working on mostly between 2000 and, and 2011, but it's still maintainers for that, and we. We call that the stable version, opposed to, to to this version that I have been building upon. That it started off uh, by Giuseppe in 2011, and he he added some some pick of pick support into into GCC and uh, updated it to 4.7. I I have. I don't think he did anything to bin Udios, at least there is no evidence found of it. Right, that's, that's the hard bit. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, and uh, in 2011 and early 2012, Udios here picked up the bin Udios port and, and uh, made the CGN generated assembly and simulator working. And uh, after that, Peter Gavin picked up, up both both GCC and Linux builds and uh, and brought it up to follow the GCC 4.8 or the current current experimental GCC. And while he did that, he he's he's doing research uh, on branch prediction. If I haven't understood. Wrongly, and he needed a non delay slot version of the tool chain. So, yeah, so that's on top of that, I have been, been adding this din dynamic linking and peak support. Just some, because I'm going to okay, use those, those observations yeah. later on. Yeah. Dot, global offset table. So, it's oh, lookup table from where. <coughs> You read uh, symbols from the from the lookup table, or the values of those symbols, or addresses it could be also. But anyway, it's a lookup table, and the dynamic linker will fill it in when when the object is loaded. And PLT procedure linkage table. Yeah, so that's a, uh, it's a kind of a jump table, but its its entries has they are usually or you try to keep them really small, it's like five, five, six instruction maximum that just fetches the address that it needs and jumps to it. There is a bit more into it with the lazy, I can't even remember what was it, lazy, 
Oh, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. The, the lazy, evaluation. Lazy, lazy evaluation, but it's not called lazy evaluation. Yeah. Well, anyway, well, it's that you, you only resolve the addresses when, when you need to, not that long time. That's yeah. very uh, But that's about what it is. Uh, okay, so where has changes been done to renew this? So that's like the VFE or the LD, the linker and the assembler. Yes. So, kind of what has been done there is uh, support for additional relocations because you need that for. for uh, Picking up stuff from the gut table and, and calling to the PLT and stuff like that. And uh, in the assembler, it has to recognize some assembly keywords related to this so you can, can actually tell the assembler that here I want to use the gut or stuff like that. I'm going to show a little example later. So. And then the C, C compiler, so LLVM and GCC has. Support, support for PIC and uh, for that to work you need to first obtain a pointer to the GOT and you have to emit calls via PLT, make all local symbols references as offsets relative to the GOT. So that means that you, you always just, because you don't know where in memory the, the actual program is going to run, so you just say you just calculate the offset from a known place in the in the application and your symbol is gonna be at the at that address and then you just fetch the current PC and calculate the, the offsets like that. And then of course if it's a global symbol you have to fetch the address to, to it through the, or from the GOT. And uh, in libc and in our case use libc uh, or microsy libc and it's called uh, so there are target specific support for for ld so that's the the dynamic linker uh, there's kind of a lot that you have to do there you have to write some some assembly code that actually jumps to the resolver and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's not completely trivial. trivial. And uh, some startup code uh, has been needed to, to be changed to support, or actually maybe not for PIC, but PI, the uh, A, E, A, I. Uh, so so posi position independent executables, they need to have, have their startup code position independent mode. Okay, so here's the um, uh, assembly keyword syntaxes that has been added to, to uh, the assembler. Uh, so, got PC high, got PC low. So that's actually you, you're telling the, that, that you need a relocation with the the distance from the current place to a certain place. So it's a piece of rel relative uh, relocation. And the GOT is then for, for fetching stuff from GOT. PLT is to make calls through the PLT. And GOT off high and GOT off low is then uh, if you want to make uh, references uh, with, a, with a GOT offset. Okay, so here's a simple... Can you just go back, Stefan? Sorry? Can you just go back? This isn't really all the, all the relocation. This is just the, the assembly keyword. Then there's a, a lot more that I'm not going to... Okay, I was, I was wondering, do you only need a 26-bit a a PLT, or can, do you need a small one as well? Mm. I can't remember. Not smaller one, but or what did you mean? I do we have no? Don't no, forget it. Forget it. I think I'm mixing up my instructions. Yeah, okay. Our jump instructions are 
twenty-six yeah. with offset, so no, the carry on. Yeah. Uh, okay, so simple, simple example how you how how some pick code would look like. So first we start with the jump, and that's just to get the the program counter into R nine. That's our link re register. So we I'm going to start on the other side. Uh, so we jump here, uh, and well, this is with a de delay slot. So when we jump here, uh, the, the link register will hold this address because uh, well, that's all it's going to be. Is that the quickest way you can think of to get the PC into a register? Uh, well, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> Well, that's the way you yeah. do it on operation. Of course, you can put stuff in the delays slot here, but I haven't done that because this way you, it's kind of compatible. You can put an if def on this route is no open. You, oh. But anyway, it's just it's clear clearer with the delay slot here too that I don't put any of those in there. Uh, yeah, and then I use this got PC high, and I say the uh, current address minus the start of the routine. Actually, this is wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, that was my turn. Yeah, so we're yeah, so we're <laughs> loading the current address minus the the LPC also. So in the end, we're gonna gonna have a pointer to the got table in R sixty. Point to the got table already in there. Um, and <coughs> now that we have have uh, the address to got in R sixteen, this is how we would use that value with a with an offset. From that, or a, yeah. So, what this does is that it's it's gonna put the the offset in here, and uh, then in the end we just add the the address to the got, and uh, then in the end we just all calls is just made like. To make them go through the PLT, you just, you just put the PLT around the, this syntax. Is, it was what was easiest to put in our C and generate. It's not like what well, seems like everybody has a bit of their own own uh, arm. Arm is having different than x86, and but maybe a couple of you of, of targets are using the x86 kind of. This isn't that kind of. What, what you would see in x86, but this was what was easiest to, to get in there without messing too much with the CGN assembly. What was the rationale? I, mean, I, I saw your comment on the original proposal was to use R10 for the global offset point. Yeah, I'm not actually 100% sure what, you're, what it's used, how it's used in Linux, so I just picked another register. Okay, I mean, I think that highlights one of the issues of documentation. This this is an ABI change, so it knocks on through everything that's done. Um, and in fact, we only dis you only discovered when you did this that the ABI had been hijacked by Linux to reserve another register that no one else knew about. Um, this stuff needs to be captured, or there's no hope of us ever having a stable tool chain. Mm. Oh. We didn't really have an ABI, ABI for this before, so, so it's kind of not breaking. But yeah, you, I, yes, I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. Yes, you clearly had to change the ABI, and there's documentation on the wiki saying the ABI must. It, it says to be written for the PIC. That's fine, yeah. but it's the fact that prior to this, actually, the ABI was already broken. Uh, yeah. So if we continue with the same same code, but disassemble, you will see this kind of stuff in here. Uh, so, 
this is the relocation, and as you see, it just puts a zero in here. So when this is getting linked, it's gonna put put uh, the real values in there. Okay, so uh, move, moving forward, how is it working? Kind of. This is are the most recent results from the GCC test suit. So we have still some failures in both GCC, GCC and G++. Some of those are actually failing in mainline too. Some are that also fails in the in the bare metal two chains, so they, they are not related to this pick work at all, but but I'm, I'm pretty satisfied at this moment, of course, I'm going to look through all, all, all what's left here, but but still some 30, 30 failures. How many unsupported tests uh, was there before the pick support? Um, I got it. Well, on the, on the 4.8 toolchain. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't have that number. Because I, I, I just guess that this must bring down the number of unsupported tests. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I, I haven't actually... It was a bit stupid. I should have run the tests before I started. Started hacking on it. Problem was I didn't know how to run the test. I had to dig up one of Jeremy's script and hack a bit on that to do it. And that came when I really started to to want to check is this actually working? Is it? Is it? Yeah. How broke? Is if we look at if we look at 4.5.1, there's on C on GCC, it has 715 unsupported tests. Oh, you've got one too. Oh, but because you've got more tests in one. In yeah, this it's one. like and twenty thousand more tests. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Passing. And it may be worth checking why those unsupported tests are unsupported because yeah. they can be for perfectly. Valid reasons like these are tests yeah, that testing for MIPS or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And did you have you tried the C library tests? Uh, no, because they are crashing in the script, so I haven't got that working. Ah, right. But I, I've got uh, the C library compiling it, and I have tested it just with some simple test application, but the actual tests. In the C++ library, I haven't been able to, to run yet. Ah. So I think I'm going to do it then. That, that's the one that always used to flatten us. I mean, getting the compiler test was yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah it, I know. It, it's when you get to the library that you discover yeah. the real. Well, and we were two we never sold. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, and I put, tried to keep them up to date, those tests, where, where the 4.5.1 tests are that link. Okay. That I put there in the in the bottom. And, and have you run the bin utils tests? Mm, no. Is that thing I'm gonna do? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Bring it up. Do you have any more slides? Huh? I want to look at slides. Yeah. <laughs> Will they be available on the internet? It's gentle and uh, soothing this morning, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> slides. <laughs> okay, so here I have an application that I have built, and uh, I, I'm running in debug mode the, the dynamic loader. So then you get, well, you can get even more information, but I, I just have the basic debug bugging. So you just see what, what libraries are being loaded and at what address I hate it yeah so we're running <laughs> running FBI it's a frame, picture view for frame buffer and it's listed the same thing that scroll by there the libraries that is so it's it's actually a fair amount of, of libraries it's using and probably not completely trivial stuff, so it's 
it's a sign that it's possible to run some applications with it at least at this point. It's a very cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And here's where you can get it if you want to play with it at the moment. I'm probably going to move when, when it gets stable enough to merge together with Peter's work and stuff like that. But here's where they are at the moment. Excellent. That's about it. Oh, man, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's the presentation. That's been like I have a small thing I still want to, to show. That's I know all of the lights. It's gonna take a while. It's it's loading Linux from from a <coughs> SPI flash, and the SPI flash on the board is actually quad, but it's only one 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 attached, and it's loading the whole to the end of the of the of the SPI. Are you running VirtualBox on the board? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Are <laughs> well, you going to emulate a x86? Yeah. <laughs> One open risk. <laughs> that could be a while as well. <laughs> yeah, so any question, we can take them now while this is loading. This is just some extra thing. It's, it's not anything. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, on Julius I was at FSCons last year, uh, we talked to a guy. Uh, who was clearly very much into this dynamic linking things, and he said, "Oh, we have to be careful to make it uh, properly, and you don't have to avoid this and that." Um, do you have any idea how, if, if there are, uh, I mean, design choices? Uh, have you made any design choices that uh, you know are good or bad or things like that? All are good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was no, much the no, but for me, this has been just an exper uh, learning experience. So. I don't know about this stuff for real. I just, I just have done it to learn it, and, and probably something needs tweaking. There might be bad design choices because I'm not smart enough to, <laughs> to know them or stuff think like that. But, I but I, I tried my best to 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 think think about what I am doing. The um, I mean the before. Stefan started. There was a lot. Of, there was a lot of collaborative design work on how the. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we have some background image going what on. Is, what like is that? A bump map. Yeah. No. I never got this running at any. It's it's still really running pretty slowly, but with the old old two chain, I never oh, got this oh, running right. at a decent speed. It went like one frame a second or something. So I haven't seen a decent bump map on a. Big screen for like ten years or something. That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's make an open game then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were two. Jan and I were talking about porting AA uh, so we can run the Quake over the con console. Oh yeah, AA. That's that thing, right? Ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was before we had the graphics support. But in answer to your question, there was a lot of the design work before Stefan. Um, God, well, Giovanni and um, so Giuseppe and uh, Jörn had a lot of discussion. And on, if you look on yeah, the wiki, yeah, actually, there's, there's actually a lot of discussion that's, about that's, why. That was so. a starting point for me too, as well. That's that, that I actually forgot to mention that Jörn, was it Jörn that put up the page? Oh, it's Jörn stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah he had put up a, a page on the wiki, uh, basically drawn up how he think the PLT entries should look like and stuff. I didn't agree with everything he had there, but, but it, it made me understand a lot of things reading them, so they were a lot of help too. Okay. And do you have any sort of performance? I mean, because you have to indirect when you're calling functions. Yeah, you can of course get, it's going to be a performance hit. Mm -hmm. yeah. But of course your code size decreases, so it's 
Yeah. Do you have to? Well, it's 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 the same when you compile for anything. Yeah. Like uh, uh, desktop or whatever that you have to make a decision, speed versus size. Or you might extend the instruction sets to make it easier. Yeah. <laughs> That that do that that would do. Well, one one of the reasons for reserving a register for the global offset table is to try and minimise the performance hit. So you know mm -hmm. you're not forever loading that register. This is like the coolest thing I've ever seen done with OpenRISC. <laughs> <laughs> is it good or bad? <laughs> I think it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> well then, we can fix that. I'm sure. Yeah. I wonder if this could run on the graphics accelerator. Yeah, I've been thinking that myself, but I, I think I wrote this some time in the beginning when I just got this video output working and it just went slow. Then, so I, it has been laying around on my on my computer and I just brought it out to to test if, if it could run any quicker with the new toolchain. Why do you think it runs so much quicker with the new toolchain? I don't know, I haven't. I haven't looked. I probably should just disassemble the whole thing and, and look through what, what's changing. I'm, I'm, I, what I, mean, I have noticed is that the, the new GCC is a lot keener on, on inlining uh, mem copies. So that could be a reason. Yeah, because you, I mean, it what? could be also that the, <laughs> the mem copy implementation doesn't get optimized properly or something like that, that we have a, get a bad mem copy. Yeah. But you think mem copy could be a, a, a reason for? But I mean, you. I mean, this isn't just a little. If you were getting one frame a second, you're getting the best part of what about ten frames a second now? Yeah. Well, that, that's a big like speed up. Two frames a second or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it it looked like, really, it didn't look like it was booming. 